and be glad in it. How about you? Y'all glad to be in the circus one more time? Yeah, God has been mighty good to us. Yeah, watch what was all last night. He's worthy of the praise. Woke us up this morning. You still not clapping your hands. It started us on our way. Man, we were running to this place trying to get into the circus. Shout amen. Is there anybody glad to be in the service one more time? David said it like this. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you're able to stand today and if you're able to stand at your house, wherever you are, come on, stand. Let's give God praise. He's worthy of the praise.
a song to sing and a testimony to give. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow down before him. Let us pray. Hey, can I get you to do this for me today? Those of you who can't bend down, then you sit down. And I want the posture, physical posture. But I also I want that same posture to be in your minds. That we lay prostrate before him. It's not just a routine thing that we do. We're not trying to put on a show. But I just think it's just something that if you can just bow down. If you can't bow down, bow down in your mind. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, for your love and for your strength, for your power, Lord, and thank you, God, for the will that you have placed in the midst of us all. Father, you've been mighty good to us. Even now, you're real good to us, better than we've been to ourselves. Father, you watched over us last night as the rains ensued upon us, the winds howling, danger all around our dwelling place. But we're testament this morning, Lord, that you didn't let anything come now our dwelling. You touched us early this morning with the finger of love, woke us up, Lord, and put a song in our hearts. God, we thank you for who you are and what you have done for us. As we think about who you are, Lord, you are Elohim. You are Jehovah. You're Jehovah Jireh. You're Jehovah Nisi. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're Jehovah God. You're always making a way for us. Even the things that we don't ask for and we need, you always supply it. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof in the world and they that dwell therein. So Lord, as we bow before you in a physical way, but more importantly, in a, in a spiritual way, Lord, thank you as we hollow your name, as we lift up your name, as we come to you, Lord, seeking you what your will is. For you told us in Matthew 6, that if we seek ye first the kingdom of God and those righteous things that you have made for us, these other things that we clamor for you and bring into our midst. Father, we don't want our will to go forth, but we remember what your son prayed out on Calvary's cross. Nevertheless, not my will, but let thine will be done. Eternal God, our Father, we are always compassed about with so much evil, but thank you, Lord, that you've hid us in the hollows of your presence. And as we come this morning, Lord, our sins are great that we've committed, unknowing and knowing God, but now we come confessing. And we ask God that you remember them more as far as the east is from the west. So far have you removed our transgressions from us. So, Lord, this morning we got nothing to complain about, but so much to shout about. Thank you, Lord, for being mighty good. Thank you, God, for doing to us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Lord, thank you for holding back the harms that God tried to change our focus and our minds. Thank you, God, that putting a shield around us, buckling us, God, in the midst of adversities and storms and trials and tribulation. God, never leaving us, always remaining with us, always ordering our steps that we might walk in the way that you have prescribed. God, we need your strength and we need your wisdom today. God, we need your view. Ask that you would help us to seek you, God. And then as we face our faces upon the aboveness of you, O oh God, set our affections upon things above rather than things on the earth. Now, Lord, we're praying now not only for ourselves, but Lord, we're praying for our congregation. And we ask God, those that are struggling with sicknesses right now, Lord, have your way. Be merciful unto them. And then, Father God, those that are struggling with emotional issues, have mercy upon them right now. We who have come into this place and upon the airwaves, God, you know what 
we stand in need of, Father, you told us that if we ask it, you're able to do it, especially when we ask it in your will. Father God, not only bless our church, but our sister churches, our friends, this fair billion a group of folks that are here, Lord, those that have lost their way, those that have gone astray, God, we ask that you will draw us to you. James says, if we draw nigh to you, you told us that you'll draw nigh to us. So now, Lord, we come. We come now drawing to you, Lord, needing your strength, needing your power, Lord, needing your wisdom, needing your understanding. Focus us uh, now upon you. And then, Father God, we pray now for this world. It's in a tailspin. But, Lord, thank you that you're still in charge. Thank you, God, that we can pray for our brothers and sisters and those who love and those who do not. Thank you, God, that we can lift them up. Have mercy upon this sin-sick world, God, we pray it in the matchless name of Jesus. Then, Father God, when time is up, when you've called our names, when we fought our last battle, when we sung our last song, one glad morning, when this life is over, we shall fly away into your presence where there be no more no mores. To that end, Lord, you're so worthy, so awesome, so magnificent. We honor you today with our mouths wide open, our hands lifted, and our hearts ready to receive. To that end, Lord, we give your name, glory, and honor. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Let us all shout together, amen, amen, and amen. I know we social distances, so you got to help yourself up. Get yourself up. Jesus, amen, amen. God bless your hearts. How many of y'all still happy about the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Bless you. You can be seated for a moment more. today got a special preacher here all our preachers are special we got a special preacher here today uh, once he's finished preaching uh, he's gonna give us an invitation and then you'll have an opportunity those who are here to accept Jesus Christ 
Those who are online, you get a chance to do that. That's going to be a number that's on there. You call that number. And if you accept Jesus Christ, then we want to get back with you and say some things to you to encourage you. And when we think about where we are, there are many things that we got to deal with this week. But one thing is most important, that we need to be a witness wherever we go. Wherever we go today, tomorrow, however long God allows us to be telling somebody about Jesus Christ. And he mighty fine to be talking about, can I get somebody to say amen? We have an opportunity to cover it. It's going crazy. It's getting on the inflamed uh, condition. Wear your mask if you haven't been boosted, if you hadn't had the shots, go on and get them right now because it's important. Listen, we need to just keep this thing capsule so it won't become inflamed. We're doing pretty good at our church, but there are our memberships still are popping up with that. And there are some times you can do everything you need to do and it just may come upon that might be your your lot but it doesn't have to be your end not all sickness are unto death so wear your mask if you haven't been shot with the um, with the virus protector then you need to do that and whatever you do today make sure that you give god's name the praise amen will you take a moment and look at your name and say you way over there but all of us are in the view of jesus christ amen Prepare yourself for a good preaching here. I'm going to ask our music ministry to come and give us a one more song. And then after that, I'm going to bring the preacher that's going to preach. In fact, let me do that right now. The right Reverend Jean Gary Olivier will be giving us manna from on high. And after we have sung and given God praise, the next voice that you hear will be that of one of the sons of the ministry, the right Reverend Jean Gary. Olivier, amen. Would y'all raise your hands as you stand upon your feet and let's tell the Lord, thank you. Repeat after me, Reverend J, preach the word. Reverend J, we would see Jesus. Amen. about how good God is and sometimes we take it for granted I just wake up every morning and breathe but it's not because of me it's because because God has breathed breath into me and I get up every morning and I'm able to walk and I'm able to talk and I'm able to move I wish I just had two witnesses in here who understand what I'm talking about And this song simply says that he knows our name, which means that he knows what we need, and he knows how to fix whatever we got going on. So I dare you today, if you're going through something, and if you're not going through nothing, I dare you to give him praise, and I dare you to recognize that he knows you, so you better learn him. I wish I had a few witnesses.
name. Come on, everybody, come on.
dare you to give him praise. You know my name. 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 Who you know my name. You know my name. Hallelujah. One more time. You know.
Amen. Do you truly believe that he knows your name? How he loves you. During Wednesday, Wednesday Bible study, Pastor asked the question, and it still resonates to me right now, as we just sung and magnified his name. Do you know how much God loves you? I don't really think we understand or comprehend the greatness of his love, the vastness of his love, the deepness of his love. So when the scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He knows our name. Praise God today. Praise his holy name. There is a word from the Lord today. You've already read John chapter 18, verse 33 to 38. Just want to focus on verse 38 in that passage. As it reads, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning having you on our mind why because you had us on your mind so Lord today we come to learn more of you to sit at your feet teach us your ways lead us and guide us shape us and mold us that we can go out and be great witnesses for you to tell a dying world about your great love. Lord, I decrease as you increase. Have your way with me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As always, when I stand before you, I like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this privilege. I am definitely not worthy to stand before you. But he is. And because of what he's done for me, I can stand before you. I also want to thank my mentor, my friend, my pastor, Pastor Wells, for this opportunity. To the pre uh, preachers that are here, deacons and officers, my brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. I would like to preach for a moment from this question. What is truth what is truth tell your neighbor what is truth as we've already read in our passage of John chapter 18 verse 33 to 38 we see there was a conversation between Pilate and Jesus and Pilate asked Jesus what is truth That question is a thought-provoking question. That question has us wanting to understand truth. Now, Jesus stood in front of Pilate, and Jesus was a mystery to Pilate. Jesus presented something to Pilate that he has never experienced. Nor did he believe, nor did he thought. His different sources of information gave him different varieties of truths. 
the words that Jesus told Pilate about truth was concerning himself. The words that Jesus mentioned to Pilate had Pilate in his mind as we look questioning a few things. Pilate was a politician and so we know politicians at times have to compromise. We know at times politicians may have to what they call uh, bend the truth just to be able to get their own way or to have things done according to the way they would have it to be done. The words of Jesus had him questioning about what he thought about people who he may have idolized. The words of Jesus had him questioning his own reality. So Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? There are many claims that people have to be truth, but is it truth? I'm going to have you thinking today, as we look at the word of God, there are many claims, but are they truth? Now, an unknown author wrote this about what truth is not. Truth is not simply whatever works. And that goes back to the ends justify the means. Just because the ends justify the means doesn't make it true. In reality, lies can appear to work. But they are still lies and not the truth. The truth is not simply what is understandable, he continues to say. A group of people can come together, listen now, and form a conspiracy based on a set of lies where they all agree on the same lie and present it as the truth. What does that sound like to you? <laughs> Unfortunately, bad news can be true. Truth is not whatever makes you feel good. Hello, somebody. Truth is not what the majority say is truth. A lengthy detail presentation can still result in false conclusions. The majority said slavery was right. But we all know that's not the truth. The truth is not defined, as he continues to say, by what is intended. People can have good intentions, and it still could be wrong. Truth is not how we know. Truth is what we know, but most specifically, who we know. Truth is not simply what is believed. A lie believed, y'all, is still a lie. Well, just in case in the beginning you didn't understand who I was talking about, we all know this to be true because in 2020 election, we had a former president who believed and put out false lies about the election. So we know the truth is important because the consequence of lies led to insurrection. Which now some are trying to say that that was a lie. There are consequences to lies. A doctor giving you a false prescription and telling you that it's good for you can kill you. The bank giving you a negative balance on your statement and saying that's the truth. When you know that yesterday when you looked at it, you had 10000 or as J.J. would say, $7 million. <laughs> can have some consequences. Taking a flight to Orlando, but your plane takes you to Hawaii. 
can have some consequences. The truth is important. The truth is significant. And the truth is very important when it comes to salvation and eternal life. Having false truths and lies concerning salvation can be devastating, can be detrimental. I'll stick with my D's, can be destructive. It'll be a big problem if you got the wrong information and now you got to spend eternity in hell. So Pilate asks, what is true? Our theme this year, we're moving towards hope. Coming from Romans chapter 5, verse 5, Pastor Will's doing a great job taking us through Romans. And you'll see a hint of Romans in my message today. In Matthew 28, verse 20, we're moving towards hope. And my brothers and sisters, you can only move towards hope when you know the truth. There is hope in the truth. So, what is truth? Just a little background as we, before we dive into the text. Uh, Jesus, being falsely arrested, was taken to the high priest, the former high priest, who was corrupt. His name was Annas. Jesus went to his house. Jesus left Anna's house and went to the current high priest's house, Caiaphas, his son-in-law. Wait, they didn't hear me. The former high priest took Jesus wrongfully to his house to question him. When he got done questioning him, he took, it, took him to the current high priest, his son-in-law. Not only, not only was Caiaphas there, but the whole Sanhedrin council was there. Try to bring about false witnesses to put Jesus to death. They still could not find any evidence. Caiaphas broke several of the Jewish laws that night. First thing, it was at night, in secret. Jesus had no one to defend him. The requirement of two to three witnesses could not be met. Then they carried him to death the same day. All these things were not allowed in the Jewish laws. Caiaphas declared Jesus guilty because Jesus claimed to be God in the flesh. The Sanhedrin council could not legally carry out the death sentence. So they had to take him to the Roman governor at that time, who was Pontius Pilate. And so we have this great conversation that Pilate is having with God in the flesh. And Jesus tells him, first he asks Jesus, what have you done? They brought me to you. They brought you to me. What have you done? Who are you? Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, if my kingdom was of this world, my servants would fight. But my kingdom is not of this world. And so here I am. And so Pilate, and, and, and Jesus says, do you believe I'm the king of the Jews? And Pilate said, no. Am I a Jew? Why are you asking me that question? I'm a Roman. But you did something that they brought you to me. So I know you know I have the power to release you. What have you done? And Jesus says, thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I unto the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So after Jesus tells him that, he asks Jesus, 
what is truth? But look what he does. Verse 38, Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Pilate didn't wait to hear what Jesus had to say. He asked the question and he left. But we look at the question he asked, what is truth? What is truth? And so because Pilate was morally weak, because Pilate had things that influenced him, he had a, a, a false view of the world from his perspective. So from that question, we're going to look and see what is truth. And, and you can have a false sense of the truth. That's the first thing we'll see, a false sense of the truth. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. And it reads, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way. The, uh, the book of Judges says it like this. At that time, there were no kings in Israel. Everyone did what was right according to their eye. There is a way that seemeth right. It's, it seems right. I can, I can sense that it's right. In my own mind, I, I feel <laughs> there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But look what scripture continues to say. But the end thereof are the ways of death. We think that we have a sense of the truth. But our sense of the truth is a false truth. From the very day we were born, I hate to hurt you, but the truth hurts. The truth must be told. From the day we were born, our sense of truth was not based on the word of God. All human beings are born with sinful and selfish desires. Selfish, sinful desires. All human beings are sinners. Sounds like Romans, don't it? <laughs> so what is sin? I said sinners, sinful. Sin is disobeying God. So a sinner is someone with a natural nature because scripture tells us we were born and shaped in iniquity. A natural nature to disobey God. Do you have a false sense of truth? Do you believe that people are good at heart? Well, let me give you a a snapshot, right? Our kids are born. No one has to teach them to lie. No one has to teach them to stop. But well, we do have to teach them to stop. Because as they're moving, they're going throughout your house, they're destroying everything in their path. And we must teach them and impress upon them the truth. We tell them, tell the whole truth. Don't leave anything out. Tell the whole truth. So children, I know, I know you want to, you know, they, when they're born, you oh, they're so pretty and precious. Little angels. <laughs> but shaped in sin, a natural nature to disobey God. Everything is mine. This is my spot. This is my chair. This is my bed. No, I'm letting you lay on this bed. This is my bed. I bought this bed. There's my food in the fridge. Don't open the fridge till I tell you to open this fridge. 
a sinful behavior comes naturally to the little ones. Naturally. Why? Because we were born and shaped in sin. And so we have a false sense of the truth from the very beginning. We're starting on a bad foot. False sense of truth. Now, a recent Barna research group surveyed and asked a question. Is there absolute truth? 66% of adults responded that they believe that there is no such thing, listen now, as absolute truth. 66%. There is no such thing as absolute truth. People, different people can define truth in conflicting ways and still be correct. 72% of those aged from 18 to 25 express this belief. In a recent series of more than 20 interviews conducted at random at a big university, people were asked if there is such a thing as absolute truth, truth that is true across all times, in all cultures, in all people, truth that is eternal. Listen to their response. All but one gave these response. Truth is whatever you believe. It's whatever you believe. And you've, hear, you've heard, if you're watching TV, I'm starting to hear this now. Let me tell you my truth. One person responded, there is no absolute truth. If there were such a thing as absolute truth, how could you know that it is right? People who believe in absolute truth are dangerous. <laughs> now, the lone exception out of 26 being interviewed, one gave this response. There is truth only in Jesus Christ. The lone Christian. God always leaves a ram in the bush. There is a way that seem right unto a man, but the end thereof are ways of death. How does it seem right? How does it seem to be the truth? What compels us to have this view of the truth? We started off with a false sense of the truth. What is truth? Well, I can tell you that emotions corrupt the truth. Emotions corrupt the truth. The truth is based on how we feel. How we feeling at this time. I can tell you I can feel this way right now, and in, in 10 minutes I can feel a different way. It's based on our emotions. This type of truth is dangerous. The truth is I feel like everyone is out against me mentality. The truth is that I feel like my job is not paying me enough. <laughs> and that, that could be true. <laughs> Emotional truth. The truth is that I feel like nobody knows what I'm going through. You don't know what I know. The truth is that I feel like nobody can help me. Not even your so-called God. God gave us emotions to be an indicator and warning of what's bothering us eternally, but it's not something that we rely upon when it comes to the truth. It is not to give us an idea of the truth. It is not to give us how we feel about the truth. It is to direct us right back to God. Because there is a way that seems right to us. It feels, senses, uh, feels right. But the ways is the ways of death. Not only does emotion corrupt the truth, but education corrupts the truth. 
What? You telling me I can't get my education on? I'm not saying you can't get your education on. <laughs> education. But education corrupts the truth. Look, because in my math class, I got my wife, a math teacher, now administrator. We learned that one plus one equals one. And that is true. Y'all listening? I said one plus one. Thank you. Just making sure you up. <laughs> two plus two equals four. That's the truth. <laughs> While in science, we learn that something to be proven must use certain methods to arrive at a logical conclusion. <laughs> but we know this word cannot be reasoned with logic. It must be, it must be approached by the Spirit. And if, you, if God hasn't opened our eyes to the truth, in our human condition, it seems illogical. <laughs> our educational consumption, no matter how big or small, corrupts the truth. In the realm of education, get all your degrees. I agree with you. Go get it. Get all you can. But just because we are educated doesn't mean that we can understand the truth. And also, for those who are just consumed about the next degree and the next degree and the next degree, there are more important things than degrees. True education, true knowledge, comes from fearing God and obeying his word. We can be educated. We can have all our degrees and alphabets behind our name. But as, pastor to, as uh, pastor's mom told him, don't become an educated fool. Because all the degrees in front, behind our name, if we don't know Jesus, Jesus just look at you like you are an educated fool. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. We are tainted vessels, and all that we do apart from God is corrupted. Not only does education corrupt the truth, but our experiences corrupt the truth. What? Our experience? Yes, our experience. Now, I'll give you an experience that I had. Uh, I pastor shared, uh, shared it with me as well. I have uh, had a friend who passed. He was in the Marines. And we served together. Uh, I left the Marines. He's he left the Marines too, but he went reserve, and he got called up to go to Iraq uh, several years back. And while he was in Iraq, a uh, bomb exploded, and shrapnel uh, hit his eyes and became blind. So he was living on, on himself, and we hadn't, we hadn't spoken for years. And all of a sudden, he called me up. He found me. He said he paid to look me up. And found me. We started communicating, I would say, for about six, seven months. And then I got a call at work that he had passed. And before he had passed, I asked him, do you believe in Jesus? And he responded, I mean, I'm not you or anything. I'm not a preacher, but I, <laughs> I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. But I still got a lot more work to do. I'm not you. I, I, I told him I thank you for that. I'm just following Jesus. And after I got that first call, the next day, I got another call. As the phone was ringing, I looked at the phone, and I said, I knew it was, it was coming from Maryland. That's where he was from. I knew it was his folks calling. I was like, they gonna ask me? I said to myself, they gonna ask me to do the funeral? 
And I was, all this was happening in like a few seconds. Well, I can't do the funeral. I'm not all day. Uh, if, if that's the case, Pastor Wilson's going to have to come with me. We'll see how that's going to work. Uh, they're going to pay our way. And I, and I can just feel, sense, just tell them that. So I answered. And sure enough, they said, we would like for you to do the funeral. And so I told him, I said, I'm not ordained. I would love to do the funeral, but my pastor would have to come with me. They said, that's fine. We'll pay for his flight and your flight. And not only that, we'll get you a rental car and a hotel. Pastor and I went there, we did the funeral. And I wasn't expecting anything else. On my way out, they gave me an envelope with a love offering. I said, you didn't have to do that? They said, no, we appreciate everything that you have done. That experience should lead me to know that God is in complete control. I should not lean on that experience. That experience should guide me because my senses could have me going to another truth. Travel with me, if you will. Write this down. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. And it states, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter's talking about the transfiguration moment that he had. Uh, with Jesus, how God the Father uh, came down and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And Peter could have rested on that. But look what Peter says. If you go down to verse 19, the A part of 1 Peter chapter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19, the A part says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. A more sure word of prophecy. Pastor preached last week and says, what doth scripture saith? The word of God is more sure than our experiences. Because you know why? Because I get older and older, my experience might get a little faulty. But the word of God <laughs> will stand. It will not be get faulty. It will not forget. It will stand. So we need to have the word light our dark places and rise in our hearts because the word did not come by someone's emotion. This word was not formulated by someone's intellect. This word was not what someone body merely experienced. This word came from almighty God. This word has power. This word is the one, the only one our truth, God and Father. What is truth? What is truth? So first we noticed a false sense of truth. Secondly, observe with me a false source of truth. A false source of truth. Sit sail with me, if you will, to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. And it declares, listen y'all, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Can you, we're searching for the truth. We're looking for the truth. So what is the source of our truth? What was, what was Pilate's source of truth? Today we have several sources of what's so-called truth. CNN, Fox, <laughs> ESPN, CBS. I think I'm going to go to the al alphabets now, ABC. NBC. <laughs> Maybe we should look into 
I, I have no problem with her. I don't have no problem with them. I got to tell you the truth. Maybe we should look into Oprah. Steve Harvey. The former president. <laughs> the source of truth. There is a great danger if our source of truth is not relied upon Jesus. So beware. Be careful. Be cautious. Because the publications of the world distorts the truth. They distort the truth. So nowadays we live and depend on information, technology to keep us connected in this world. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. I find YouTube very useful uh, as pastor has helped me to uh, uh, work on my lawn. And there's this guy uh, that's on YouTube and he's very helpful. Uh, but it's dangerous, the inf other information that's on YouTube, if you're not careful. In our jobs, education, relationships, whatever we do, we do need to look into publications for a variety of things. But unfortunately, we are human beings and people, can you believe this, have agendas. <laughs> people have uh uh, things that they're trying to accomplish for their own selfish reasons. And I just want to name six companies that own 90% of all media that we come in contact with. And you probably deal with all of them throughout your day. They own television, radio stations, movie studios, news, and sports broadcasting channels. Cell phone companies, music companies, video game companies, and on and on. These six, in no particular order, GE, News Corp, Disney, Disney, Viacom, Time Warner, and CBS. We are bombarded by their ideas of the truth. We are flanked from each side on what to think about politically. We are called intolerant because our view of the truth is absolute. No compromise. Jesus is the truth. Do not be deceived. Publications of the world distorts the truth. So I tell you, brothers and sisters, beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Not only does publications of the world distort the truth, personalities of the world distort the truth. The image portrayed by personalities of this world is that of multiple marriages, addiction to drugs and alcohol, and a revolving door of rehab. Happiness and success, according to them, is a carefree life with no limits. Do what you want. <laughs> Do what you want to do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, this is a dangerous picture of the world. It is a deceiving picture of the world. The world calls this the good life. The good life is to be carefree, no worries. Your truth is the truth. It don't matter what you think. As long as I'm not hurting you, this is my truth over here. Beware. Lest any man spoil you, my brothers. And for, you, for those of you that are here and watching, if you don't know the truth, you will have an opportunity to know the truth. If you're living this way, this is not the truth. You're living in a false reality. 
This is not the truth. Your head is in the sand. The only truth that we have is the truth given to us by God Almighty. So beware of them. Their philosophy, their deceitfulness, deception. Satan is trying to kill us. And the only way he can do that is by telling us lies. So let us look at some. Once again, I'm not, I'm not against them. I'm just telling you what they said. I'm just telling you what they said. So look at some writers and renowned poets, musicians, media moguls, and what they think about the truth. There's a poet named Steve Turner. He wrote a parody called Creed. And part of this goes like this. Listen, I believe that each man must find the, the, the truth that is right for him or her. Reality will adapt accordingly. The universe will readjust. History will alter. I believe there is no absolute truth except the truth that there is no Absolute truth. Personalities distort the truth. You've heard of her, Marilyn Monroe. And she said, I believe in everything. <laughs> A little bit. John Lennon says, and I quote, I believe in everything until... It's disproved. So I believe in fairies, the myths, the dragons. It all exists, even if it's in your mind. Who's to say that dreams and nightmares aren't as real as the here and now? I have nothing against them. I'm just telling you what they said. This one going to hurt. This one gonna hurt y'all. Steve Harvey says, and I quote, there's no one way to heaven. No one way to paradise. Harvey goes on to say, it's like television. Now there's over 800 channels on cable. And they're all pretty entertaining. So I'm pretty sure that to get to heaven, there's got to be more than one route. Because somebody watching another channel or turning another channel than you, they're still getting entertained. And they probably still are going to heaven. If you're leaning on personalities and their opinions, it distorts the truth. There's another one that's going to hurt. Oprah. Opal says, and I quote, one of the mistakes that human beings make is only believing that there is only one way to live. We don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world, that there are many ways and paths to what you call God. Her path, his path might be something else. And when he or she gets there, they might call it the light. They might call it the light. They might call it the carpet. They might call it the basket. They might call it the shoe. They might call it the water bottle. But her loving his kindness, his generosity, if it brings them to the same point that it brings you, then it doesn't matter whether they call it God along the way. Dangerous. Dangerous. My brothers and sisters, these personalities are distorting the truth. And there is something on the line. Eternal life is on the line. 
Salvation in Jesus is on the line. And they're distorting the truth with outright lies. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except, except, except they come by me. There's only one way to live. There's only one path to take. There's only one God to follow. His name is Jesus. Not only does personalities distort the truth, but philosophies of the world distorts the truth. Philosophies. Philosophies. What do you mean by that, preacher? The world put their own spin on things. I had a friend in the military that always said, I got to see it to believe it. You only live once. So live it to the fullest. Come on, man. Do whatever makes you feel good. Follow your heart. If it can't be proven, it's not real. The heart is wickedly deceitful in all its ways. These kind of thinkings distort the truth and are very destructive. I told you, there's, there is something on the line in knowing the truth. Eternal life is on the line. So again, my brothers and sisters, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So first, my brothers and sisters, what is truth? What is truth? First, we notice a false sense of truth. Secondly, we observe a false source of truth. Finally, see the firm source of truth. The firm source of truth. I thought you start clapping. I thought you start hollering, hallelujah. I thought you would start shouting in this place. The firm source of truth. So go ahead and look with me to John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. says it like this. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And what does the truth does? The truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The truth shall make you free. It is a source of absolute and factual truth. It is not based on anything else but God himself. The truth is real because God is real. God is truth. He is the ultimate source. Jesus said that he would set the spirit of truth. And when he comes, he would guide us into all truth. What truth? The Holy Spirit will guide us to the truth of Jesus Christ. The word is the source of truth. Jesus is the embodiment of truth. The word made flesh. An unknown author writes this. Without it, the world devolves into an amorphous chaos where everyone's preference describes a personal reality disconnected from everyone else. In this dark place, no decision is good or bad. No action is right or wrong. However, in the presence of truth, we are exposed for what we are. Therefore, we need truth as a divine measuring rod of our identities. Truth reveals that we are sinful. Truth reveals that we need Jesus. The truth and learning Jesus confirms the truth. Learning Jesus confirms the truth. In the law, of, in the law, in the court, in the court of law, two witnesses must confirm evidence and events. In journalism, journalists report stories, but they have to be verified by two sources to back them up. 
in attempting to break a story. When it comes to Jesus, the same is true. God did not only provide two witnesses to verify Jesus, but in the Gospels we have four. He did not only provide two witnesses of his resurrection, but over 500 people saw Jesus resurrected. So that there will be no doubt of the truth. No doubt that Jesus is who he says he is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. How do we know that Jesus is who is the truth? How do we know that he is who he says he is? Through the word. We study his birth, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. His birth. Jesus was foretold throughout the Old Testament. Jesus was prophesied. He was the promised Messiah who came to the world to redeem the world from sin. It was a miraculous birth. Never been done before. Only by God. Only through God. To show us his love. Not only his birth, his ministry. Jesus preached the good news of the gospel. Telling everyone, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Turn from your wicked ways. I am he. I am God. I've come for you. Healing the sick. Opening the eyes of the blind. To show his love. The love of almighty God. His ministry, his death. Yes. Jesus is the lamb yes. of God who takes away the sins of the world. Yes. A sin debt that we could never pay. Yes. Everyone cannot do it on their own abilities. Yes. Could not satisfy God. Not Moses, yes. not Jeremiah, yes. not David, but Jesus. Yes. His death, yes. his resurrection. Jesus did not stay dead. He didn't stay dead. He said, I lay my life down. I can pick it back up. I thought you would shout of the truth. I thought you would stand up on your feet of the truth. No one takes my life. I give it willingly. And I have the power to pick it back up again. Jesus, learning of Jesus confirms the truth. From beginning to end, the Bible is talking about Jesus. The love that God has for us. God the Father made the plan. Jesus executed the plan. And now the Holy Spirit is leading us to the plan and to live in that plan. What makes Christianity so different? What sets us apart from other religions? I know they put it under religion, but we, we know we, we live the way. It's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. Why can't we be so bold about the truth? I can be bold about the truth. Even, even in spite of my experiences, I can lean on this word and be bold about the truth. You know Why? Others claim they could point you to the truth. But you know what Jesus did? Jesus says, I am the truth. Right here, right now. The way and the life. Not only does learning Jesus confirms the truth, but living Jesus confesses the truth. Living Jesus confesses the truth. What do you mean by that living Jesus? Jesus said, if ye continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. After we have learned of him, the truth is confirmed. We must now start living that truth. By living that truth, we will confess Jesus Christ to the world. This is the truth. Jesus is the truth. All these things are lies. And we must tell it. We must speak truth to power. We will be treated as he was treated because we are now showing the truth. The truth to the world. That they are in need of Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. We will be discipled by him. Uh, we will be his disciples indeed. And in living a life that confesses the truth. Proclaiming the gospel to all who are lost. Because I just mentioned to you, 
There's a false sense of the truth. There's a false source of the truth. And we have the firm source of the truth in Jesus Christ. We must go tell that Jesus is the truth. Our life purpose, our mission is to tell others now that we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light to tell others about the truth. The reality that they're living in is false. At the end, this is not the end. There is another life. And you can decide where you, what side you're going to be on. On God's side or the other side, still praising God. I'm reminded of this hymn by Edward Moat. You know it very well. Titled, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. It says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. I dare not trust. I don't know what you're trusting right now. I don't know what you're believing right now. I don't know what life is, what, what, what's going on in your life right now. But I dare not trust. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean. I lean on him, on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Oh, other ground are seeking stand. On Christ, I stand. All other ground is seeking sand. What is truth? Truth is in Jesus. 42 generations. He came to tell us of the truth. We had a false sense of the truth. We had false sources of the truth. He went about eradicating the Pharisees and the Sadducees, letting them know, I am the truth. Then he marched up Golgotha's hill, knowing the truth, knowing he is the truth. And he wanted to tell everybody else about the truth, which was him. <laughs> he marched up because of his love. They stretched him out wide, dropped him low. He saw the thief on the right and left. The thief on the right recognized the truth. So the thief said, when you get into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus said, this day, this day you'll be with me in paradise. The truth. He bled and he died. He bled and he died, y'all. That's the truth. But before he died, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's the truth. He died. They put him in a borrowed tomb. I like that part. It was a borrowed tomb. No one had laid in there before. That's the truth. Friday night. He was dead. There's some people like to say he wasn't dead. So he was dead. That's the truth. Saturday night. He was dead. That's the truth. But right on it. <laughs> Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hand. That's the truth. All oh, power. With the keys of death in his hand. That's the truth. And you can have them today. If you're here today. And you don't know Jesus. We offer Christ to you, the truth. So won't you come?
Won't you come? If you're watching, in a minute you'll get a chance to tell us the decision you made about the truth. And if you're here today, we offer Christ to you, the truth. If you don't know the truth today, he made it real simple to receive him. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe that you are God in the flesh and that you came and you died for me. Lord, today, I receive you into my heart. If you believe that, if you pray that, the Bible says you're saved. You're saved. You're saved. How about you that are here or watching and you do believe, but the truth of life has got you distorted? Won't you come? Restoration is yours today. Believe and know that He loves you, He knows your name. And finally, if you're looking for a church home, we're preaching the truth. We're preaching Jesus. Join this fellowship. Come down. Call us up. Let us know that you made a decision for Christ. Salvation. Rededication. Fellowship is yours today. Come. Come right now. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. Won't you come now? Won't you come to Christ? The truth, the way, and the life. Won't you come? Salvation, rededication, fellowship, come.
He is worthy. He is worthy. Amen. You may be seated in the presence. Let's thank God for the message. And for the messenger. Amen. Amen. What, what is truth? Amen. Come on down, preacher. Amen. Now, we, I know these folk here. Uh, these are my friends and they, my play cousin, but she my cousin. Come on. Come on, Rev. Johnson. Amen. Now, uh, y'all been coming for a while. And uh, I know you as the Smith, Reverend Smith and Sus Smith, uh, James Smith, and uh, what's your name? Angela Smith. They are coming from, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, Mount Olive Baptist Church in Kingston. That's my brother's, uh, my brother's church. And, uh, and so what's y'all pleasure? We know we're in the COVID thing. We're gonna try to stay close, but what's your pleasure? Reverend. So what's your pleasure for walking up here with your wife this morning? You did. Yeah. Clap your hands, and uh, Sir Smith, if that's your uh, desire, do you, uh, do you, what brought you up here following your husband? He said he's the head of the house. Yeah. Amen. Well, God bless your hearts. So. We don't vote folks in because you can't, uh, that ain't our position. Uh, and that's why I gave you an opportunity to say to me what, you, what your ambitions were. And you said that, that you want to unite with this church. And uh, our church is here. We in representation here with some members that are here. And then there are those on the screen that uh, can't, you can't see them, but they can see you. And uh, I tell you what, on behalf of the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church because your desire is to become a Grove Knight. You've already been saved. Am I right about that? You saved and glad about it. You saved and glad about it. The truth that Jesus is the way, truth, and the life. On that uh, response, our church is here. Church, what y'all say? Y'all stand on your feet and let's receive them into this congregation. Amen. Come on, let's welcome them here. Let's welcome them. I know we, I know we, uh, well, I'm going to shake your hand. We just don't put it in your face. God bless you. That's the right hand of fellowship. You Reverend, Reverend James Smith. You are full-fledged a member of the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church here in Fairfield, Alabama. You are a preacher of the gospel. We got no other rooms for you to do what you need to do. We got a place for you to preach the gospel, to work it out. And uh, we accept you just as you are. And realize one thing, that if God has led you here, you'll be just fine. 
Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. This my friend, this my realtor, this my buddy, this my confidant. We cut up all the time. And Angela, I'm excited about it. And let me tell you, you're full-fledged. I give you the right hand of fellowship uh, to that you are a member of the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We call ourselves the Grove Knights. And uh, we're not, we listen, we ain't no perfect church. Uh, there are problems everywhere. Uh, if that was a perfect church, then we wouldn't be in it. Uh, so God is the leader of this church, and we're excited about the gift that he's given you and your husband, especially when it comes to teaching. We have plenty of room for opportunities of that. We're going to take you through orientation and give you a chance to know it's been about how many years were y'all at? Um, 16 years at Mount Olive. And uh, now we want you to come in and kind of like settle down a little bit. Then we're going to get you to back into the role that you God has given you both preaching and teaching. And so we're glad to have you. And uh, we are excited about you. And Angela, you, you know my wife. You know a lot of folks up in here. But one thing we know about you is that you are true in your heart. And we receive you as the person that you are. Come on, church. Let's thank God for them. Hey, um... Uh, these preachers, they want to love on you. We love, we want to do it. We can't do it. We got to just be, we got to be right. But uh, we, by them standing, they're letting you know that you are welcome. We are, uh, we ain't no phony people. Uh, we, we, uh, we are to cuss you out uh, in, in the name of Jesus. Uh, but uh, that's a bad thing right there. But we are real and you're coming to a real place. Fairfield is sitting in the midst of needs. And uh, we, sooner or later, we're going to get outside these walls and get into this community. And thank God for sending folks like you. So we receive you just as you are. I'm going to ask my wife to come. Will you come, uh, sweetie girl, with your mask on? My wife, you the wife. You come this way. Hey, man, who are you looking for? The camera. Oh, you all up on it. It's all on you. Amen. You should get with your buddy. Come here, preacher. Come here, preachers. Uh, go on, greet them in Jesus. Amen. All right. Sister so Wells, if you come and get Reverend Smith and take him back to his seat. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take his wife. Come on in there. Clap your hands, somebody. Amen. God bless your heart. You be seated for a moment some more. Thank you so much. Did this preacher preach up in here today? Did he preach the truth up in here today? Lord, have mercy. God bless your heart. Now listen, we're in that moment of giving. And uh, if you haven't given, this an opportunity. Upon the first day of the week, let everyone lay by store as God has prospered you. Freely you have received. Now freely give. Those who need to give, uh, we're going to give you a moment. We only have a couple of ushers here that will give you directions. As we get to re receive the benediction, then we would uh, give an opportunity. They will lead you to the tithing box. You'll have a good little place. They'll take you to it. If you need to do it electronically, then you do what you need to do. One thing I need to let you know, that worship is not ended if you haven't given. Amen. That's part of the worship. We've had a great word, great worship, great word preached to us. We've received and God is sending us people to come help us carry out the mandates that he's given us in the form of the Smiths. And we receive them in the name of Jesus Christ. And then now we get a chance to give back into this part of it with our resources. And then we'll receive the benediction. So I want us to pray for a few moments. Let's take that time. If you're able to remain still, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, thank you, God for feeding us. Thank you, God, for giving us that true manna that came down from your throne room. Thank you, Lord, for the preacher. Now, Lord, we pray, God, and give your name to praise for the, for the Smiths. Lord, we just thank you, God, that you are still leading people to this ministry that we can carry out the ministry that you placed us in. Lord, we just pray now, God, that you will give them peace and don't allow the enemy to confuse them, Lord. Pray, God, that when people say negative things about 
why they moved and all that God that you would give them the truth that they can stand on regardless then father God we pray now Lord for these symbols that maybe have already been given through electronic means those that will give in this service Lord as we pass by the tithing places we just pray God that you will receive these blessings we understand that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein we don't own anything God but we know all that you've given us it belongs to you so we give it back to you press it down and shake it together and Lord roll it over pour into our bosom that we be a blessing as well we love you and we honor you now, Lord, and we thank you for those who will give, those who've already given, those who maybe haven't come to that moment of thought in their mind. God, work on them and have mercy. We ask it in Jesus' name. We do pray, amen, and amen, and amen. Will you stand? Yes, sir. Reach out and touch. Reach out, reach out. You can't touch nobody. In the physical, but in your spirit, why you can reach out, touch. yes, make this world better, reach out, in the spirit, reach out, touch, and better place, wow. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth. And now forevermore, shout with me, amen. Shout with me, amen. Shout with me, amen. God bless your heart now. Get your belongings. And let's remember that we still want to be in order. We want to go by the guidelines two years and a half ago we want to remember one thing that as we walk with your mask on listen be careful wash your hands keep your hands out your face 